Hello everyone, welcome back to 901 Woodworking and part four of our CNC build. Hello, I'm Hubert Mace and today we're going to talk about the wiring and the electronics of the build. If you recall from part one of the series, all of the electronics are housed on a slide which is mounted in the bottom cabinet. And I won't go into the exact wiring of everything. There's plenty of resources online that go into that level of detail. The Roger Webb has a great series of videos on how to wire this thing and I highly recommend them. It looks a lot more complicated than it is, mainly because there are four of the motor controllers. So there's, these wires are all multiplied by four. So it looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. But what I will go through is a couple of things that I found that are quite important to uh, take into consideration. Again, let's go through the things that are here. This unit here is the VFD, which controls the spindle. This is the controller for the X motor. This is a controller for the Y motor. This is the controller for the Z motor. And this is controller for the A motor, which is slaved along with the Y motor. And they run in parallel with each other. Then below this here is the Mach 3 board, which is the interface to the computer. Over here is the 48 volt supply. And over here is a 24 volt supply. The other thing that is included in here is a remote panel for the VFD, which I've mounted on the front panel of the cabinet. And it is connected by this flat ribbon cable that was supplied with the VFD. Lastly, there is this cable here, which is a parallel port cable, which connects the computer to the Mach 3 board. One thing you'll notice is that I have in a couple places here mounted a grounding strips. This is very critical. I had read online that the cables can be subject to interference coming from the spindle. And so other people online highly recommended that these cables be shielded. And I did use a shielded cable, but at the beginning I had forgotten to connect all of the shields to ground. And I had a number of problems in getting this system to run. The biggest problem I had was that Mach 3 would freeze and it would just stop. Even though the computer was running fine and the electronics on the board were running fine, Mach 3 would freeze. And I, what I discovered was that I needed to make sure that all of the shields for all the wires are indeed connected to ground and also that the cable interfacing between the computer and the Mach 3 board has these chokes at the end and one at each end. Once I replaced this cable and connected all the shields, I had no more trouble with the Mach 3 freezing and I've had no issues at all running the machine. The other issue that I had was the wiring that comes with the controllers and the stepper motors. Now remember, I bought stepper motors that have feedback control. The wiring that goes from the box, the control boxes to the motors is too short for the machine. So I replaced all of them and it requires two sets of wires. One is a four conductor shielded wire, which is this gray cable here. And then the other is a six conductor shielded wire, which is this white cable here. The four conductor powers the motor. The six conductor cable is the feedback controller. As you can see, I think it's important in, in a case like this to keep all your cables organized. I have them connected with little wire ties to the board just to keep things organized so I know where everything goes and if there's a problem I can always uh, diagnose it fairly quickly. The other thing that I included in this build which I think is critical and I know there's a many CNC machines that don't have them are these limit switches. These switches sit on both ends of each axis and anytime the machine travels too far or tries to travel too far it hits the switch and stops the machine. Now, there are two ways of wiring these switches. There is a parallel way and the series way. In the parallel way, the two switches are wired in parallel to the inputs of the uh, Mach 3 board. The problem with this method is that if a wire in one of the circuits breaks, the other circuit will still be complete and the system won't know that there's a break in the wires until it's too late. 
In the series wiring, on the other hand, if you use the normally closed position of the switches, it means that the circuit is complete in its normal operation. So anything that happens to break a wire will open the circuit and you will immediately know that there is a problem. This happened to me when one of the, the wires on one of the switches broke, uh, something bumped against it, and the circuit opened and the machine wouldn't run anymore. I then had to go looking throughout the whole system to find out where the problem was. But at least I knew that there was a problem or it didn't show itself when the machine tried to over travel and then wouldn't trip the limit switches. Well, that's it for the wiring of the CNC machine. Like I said, it's not very complicated. Most of the wiring instructions come with the units themselves, like the VFD and the stepper motor controllers. So if you just follow those instructions, it really isn't very hard. The important thing to remember is use shielded cables and make sure you connect those shields to ground. It really is important, otherwise there will be interference coming from either from the VFD or from other sources. If you have a drill that you're using nearby, they can create interference. So make sure those cables are shielded and the shields are connected and you shouldn't have any problem. Again, it's fairly simple. I'll put a link in the description to other videos that I found helpful in learning and wiring up the CNC machine, but really anybody can do it. It's not difficult at all. Thank you for watching. Next time we'll talk about setting up the machine and getting it to run.